Hello and welcome, my friends. My name is Calvin. I'm here with Pastor Franklin Nicholas, and welcome to another episode of My Daily Manor, where our goal is to help strengthen and encourage your walk with God by providing a daily, structured Bible reading plan, where the plan is to go through the entire Bible together in one year for Bible readings. But more importantly, the goal is to hear from God as God speaks to us through His Word. So before we go into the Word of God, we're going to ask Pastor Nicholas to open us up with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear loving Father, we thank you for the opportunity of studying your word. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for another day and the blessings of another day. We are asking for your spirit to be with us and give us guidance and protection as we study your word. It's my precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Nicholas, for that wonderful prayer. Now, friends, what you can expect from the episode and the structure of this program is we do the Bible reading together. And as we go through the word of God, I'm going to share my screen. And also you'll hear the Bible being played in audio format from Brian Harden and the Daily Audio Bible team. But we strongly encourage you, if you can, to get a Bible out, right? Get your physical Bible out or on your phone and follow along with us. But if you can, you can listen to it and you can follow along on my screen as well. And after the Bible reading, we'll have a short discussion between Pastor Nicholas and myself where we discuss the themes and the topic for the day, right? And then we have a prayer for you and the community to end. All right, so we hope that you are blessed, and let's dive straight into the Word of God. Today is the 21st day of July. Welcome to the Daily Audio Bible. I am Brian, and it is fantastic to be around the global campfire together with you here right now as we gather and take the next step forward on our journey through the scriptures we started the book of second chronicles yesterday without a lot of fanfare because well first and second chronicles they're not moving us into entirely different territory we're just con continuing the story forward the books were broken apart later on after they were written for the ease of, of finding things so we have uh, begun, begun to track along with King Solomon and his intention to build a temple for the name of the Most High God and situated in Jerusalem where, uh, where King David had established the place. So let's pick up the story. Second Chronicles chapter 4 verse 1 through 6 verse 11 today. Solomon also made a bronze altar 30 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 15 feet high. Then he cast a great round basin 15 feet across from rim to rim, called the sea. It was seven and a half feet deep and about 45 feet in circumference. It was encircled just below its rim by two rows of figures that resembled oxen. There were about six oxen per foot all the way around, and they were cast as part of the basin. The sea was placed on a base of twelve bronze oxen, all facing outward. Three faced north, three faced west, three faced south, and three faced east, and the sea rested on them. The walls of the sea were about three inches thick, and its rim flared out like a cup and resembled a water lily blossom. It could hold about 16,500 gallons of water. He also made 10 smaller basins for washing the utensils for the burnt offerings. He said five on the south side and five on the north, but the priests washed themselves in the sea. He then cast 10 gold lampstands according to the specifications that had been given, and he put them in the temple. Five were placed against the south wall, and five were placed against the north wall. He also built ten tables and placed them in the temple, five along the south wall, and five along the north wall. Then he molded one hundred gold basins. He then built a courtyard for the priests, and also the large outer courtyard. He made doors for the courtyard entrances and overlaid them with bronze. The great bronze basin, called the Sea, was placed near the southeast corner of the temple. 
Horam Abi also made the necessary wash basins, shovels, and bowls. So at last, Horam Abi completed everything King Solomon had assigned him to make for the Temple of God. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the two networks of interwoven chains that decorated the capitals, the 400 pomegranates that hung from the chains on the capitals, two rows of pomegranates for each of the chain networks that decorated the capitals on top of the pillars, the water carts holding the basins, the sea and the twelve oxen under it, the ash buckets, the shovels, the meat hooks, and all the related articles. Horam Abi made all these things of burnished bronze for the temple of the Lord, just as King Solomon had directed. The king had them cast in clay molds in the Jordan Valley between Sukkot and Zarethan. Solomon used such great quantities of bronze that its weight could not be determined. Solomon also made all the furnishings for the temple of God, the gold altar, the tables for the bread of the presence, the lampstands and their lamps of solid gold to burn in front of the most holy place as prescribed, the flower decorations, lamps and tongs, all of the purest gold, the lamp snuffers, bowls, ladles, and incense burners, all of solid gold, the doors for the entrances to the most holy place, and the main room of the temple, overlaid with gold. So Solomon finished all his work on the temple of the Lord. Then he brought all the gifts his father David had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and the various articles, and he stored them in the treasuries of the temple of God. Solomon then summoned to Jerusalem the elders of Israel and all the heads of tribes, the leaders of the ancestral families of Israel. They were to bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to the temple from its location in the city of David, also known as Zion. So all the men of Israel assembled before the king at the annual festival of shelters, which is held in early autumn. When all the elders of Israel arrived, the Levites picked up the ark. The priests and Levites brought up the ark, along with the special tent and all the sacred items that had been in it. There, before the ark, King Solomon and the entire community of Israel sacrificed so many sheep, goats, and cattle that no one could keep count. Then the priests carried the ark of the Lord's covenant into the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and placed it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the ark, forming a canopy over the ark and carrying its poles. These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place, which is in front of the most holy place, but not from the outside. They are still there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Mount Sinai, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they left Egypt. Then the priests left the holy place. All the priests who were present had purified themselves, whether or not they were on duty that day. And the Levites, who were musicians, Asaph, Heman, Jeduthun, and all their sons and brothers, were dressed in fine linen robes and stood at the east side of the altar playing cymbals, lyres, and harps. They were joined by 120 priests who were playing trumpets. The trumpeters and singers performed together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices and praised the Lord with these words. He is good. His faithful love endures forever. At that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. The priests could not continue their service because of the cloud, for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of God. Then Solomon prayed, O Lord, you have said that you would live in a thick cloud of darkness. Now I have built a glorious temple for you, a place where you can live forever. Then the king turned around to the entire community of Israel 
standing before him and gave this blessing. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept the promise he made to my father David. For he told my father, From the day I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have never chosen a city among any of the tribes of Israel as the place where a temple should be built to honor my name. Nor have I chosen a king to lead my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem as the place for my name to be honored, and I have chosen David to be king over my people Israel. Then Solomon said, My father David wanted to build this temple to honor the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord told him, You wanted to build the temple to honor my name. Your intention is good, but you are not the one to do it. One of your own sons will build the temple to honor me. And now the Lord has fulfilled the promise he made, for I have become king in my father's place, and now I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised. I have built this temple to honor the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, there I have placed the ark which contains the covenant that the Lord made with the people of Israel. Romans 7, 1 through 13. Now, dear brothers and sisters, you who are familiar with the law, don't you know that the law applies only while a person is living? For example, when a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he is alive. But if he dies, the laws of marriage no longer apply to her. So while her husband is alive, she would be committing adultery if she married another man. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law and does not commit adultery when she remarries. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. When we were controlled by our old nature, Sinful desires were at work within us, and the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, resulting in death. But now, we have been released from the law, for we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the Spirit. Well then, am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it was the law that showed me my sin. I would never have known that coveting is wrong if the law had not said, you must not covet. But sin used this command to arouse all kinds of covetous desires within me. If there were no law, sin would not have that power. At one time I lived without understanding the law, but when I learned the command not to covet, for instance, the power of sin came to life and I died. So I discovered that the law's commands, which were supposed to bring life, brought spiritual death instead. Sin took advantage of those commands and deceived me. It used the commands to kill me. But still, the law itself is holy, and its commands are holy and right and good. But how can that be? Did the law, which is good, cause my death? Of course not. Sin used what was good to bring about my condemnation to death. So we can see how terrible sin really is. It uses God's good commands for its own evil purposes. Psalm 
Psalm 17 A Prayer of David O Lord, hear my plea for justice. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my prayer, for it comes from honest lips. Declare me innocent, for you see those who do right. You have tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I am determined not to sin in what I say. I have followed your commands, which keep me from following cruel and evil people. My steps have stayed on your path. I have not wavered from following you. I am praying to you because I know you will answer, O oh God. Bend down and listen as I pray. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. By your mighty power, you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Guard me as you would guard your own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Protect me from wicked people who attack me, from murderous enemies who surround me. They are without pity. Listen to their boasting. They track me down and surround me, watching for the chance to throw me to the ground. They are like hungry lions eager to tear me apart, like young lions hiding in ambush. Arise, O Lord. Stand against them and bring them to their knees. Rescue me from the wicked with your sword. By the power of your hand, O Lord, destroy those who look to this world for their reward. But satisfy the hunger of your treasured ones. May their children have plenty, leaving an inheritance for their descendants. Because I am righteous, I will see you. When I awake, I will see you face to face and be satisfied. Proverbs 19, 22 and 23 Loyalty makes a person attractive. It is better to be poor than dishonest. Fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. All right, friends. So we've come to the end of today's reading. Um, Pastor, what are your thoughts on the reading for today? Yeah, today's reading was, was just simply amazing. Though. God really shed his light upon the reading. Uh, Solomon was main purpose was to build a temple to the Lord. Yep. And by God's grace, he did. And the Ark of the Covenant entered into that temple. What a joyful occasion for where the Ark was years before and now where it is. That was a tremendous thing. But for mm-hmm. me, Solomon, we are in the same way. God has called, God called Solomon to do a particular work and he did it. He also called, he has also called us to do a particular work, and mm. we have to do it. Our, our, our work is to spread the gospel, mm. and we have to take it seriously as Solomon took building the temple seriously. And mm. at one time, Solomon, God's presence, they saw God's presence when they were dedicating the temple. They actually saw God's presence in the in a dark cloud. Yeah. We too have to be able to see God's presence with us while we're doing His will, because He is with us. And I think that was that was tremendous for me to see God, to know that God is in there with them. That, that, that right. was special. Yeah. Right. And and the purpose of God's presence there was God is confirming His blessing. Amen. Acknowledging Beautiful. that yes, you're on the right path, you're doing the right thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And what when you were saying that, what brought that, what brought came to my mind was we had a discussion. Uh, one of the episodes we did was talking about what's the thing that we can do to make God happy or to make God smile. Yeah. And it brought back like obedience and faithfulness. Because when I think of Solomon, I think of faithfulness. You know, he had a duty, like you said, and he carried it out. 
he was faithful to his calling. Yes, yeah. Right. And, and, and sometimes we have to be to, to know that God is there. Uh, for me, yeah. if I'm in a dark spot or in a dark place in my bedroom or, or in, in my closet and my eyes are closed and yes, still I can see light in there. Mm. I know that this is God's glory right there. I know for myself. This is good because there's no way my eyes can be closed and my hands are over my eyes for me to see light. Right. And when I see that light, I, I, I recognize God's presence. So we can find different ways to know that God's presence is actually with us or is in this place. Okay, awesome. So if we need to tr say if we translate that, Solomon in building the temple was blessed with light, was blessed with success. So those blessings, those successes were evidence of God's favor and blessings upon him. Right? That's right. That's right. So if God calls us to a task and we're doing God's work, and as the Lord opens the door and blesses us with favor, you know, and many blessings, that's a way that we know, yes, you're on the right path. You're doing my Amen. will. Beautiful. Beautiful. Got it. Yeah. We yeah. have to know, we have to know that God is there leading. We have gotcha. to know he is he, he's there and there are different ways we can know his presence is with us. Yeah. 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 Because That's also right. what I found interesting with the, the Psalms, it seems like David is crying out for help and seeking yeah. God deliverance. Because as a as a believer, as a Christian, there will come a time when our back is against the wall. It happens to everyone. Yeah. Right? Whether you're doing God's will or not, God is going to allow times where you go through the crucible and your back is against the wall. Things are tough. And you just need to know, Lord, are you still with me? Are you still there? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I like that, though. David David was praying, and he actually knew that God would answer his prayer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He knew that. Yeah. He was, he had that kind of connection with God. And, and wow. Yeah. And that in the prayer, he knew God would answer his prayer. Right. And we have to know, we have to know the same thing, too. Again, this readings and, and, and the service, we have to be able to take it home. We have to make it personal. Yeah. Uh, we have to get to the point where we can know that God will answer that prayer or God has answered that prayer for us. We how, have how, do, how do we get to that point where we know God is going to answer the prayer? Very good. That's a good question. Uh, the relationship with God. Right. David had a relationship with God. I mean, that was just unbelievable. Yeah. And, and we have to get to the point where we know when God is talking. Yeah. We know we have to be to listen to him. We have to know we're in the presence of God in everything that is going on around us yeah. in the sinful world. We, we we can know that God is, we can feel God sometimes in, in us. Amen. And this morning, again, for the last couple of mornings when we're talking, I can actually feel the presence of God in my, I, my, my hair is, my head is going somewhere else. My hair is tingling. I know yeah. this is God's presence here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and he promises in his word, where two or more are gathered in his name, he's in the he's midst in the of bless. Yeah. yeah, he's in the awesome. midst. Awesome. No, I love what you said, that David had that intimate relationship with God. That, and you always bring that point up in terms of trust, right? So he knew. And, and what I think is interesting is, sorry, my brain is going all over the place this morning, but that trust relationship, that intimacy didn't start when David became king. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. in the, the wilderness when he was taking care of sheep. Yeah. So right. it starts in small, and the Bible says, "Do not despise, despise, despise small beginnings." Yeah. Meaning that when David was taking care of sheep, where no one was around, he had no fame, no no wealth, no no one knew who he was, apart from his family. But God knew who he was, and God was with him even then. And then he stuck with God, and all the way through when he became king, right? Wow, wow, that is so true, man. That is yeah. so true. It, the relation starts, you're right, the relation started when he was just a little boy. Yeah. And God recognized mm -hmm. him as a little child. As a little child. In obscurity. Yeah, as a little child, God recognized, and God determined, God was determined that he, David was going to be king. Yeah. Because in, in, of the in obscurity. Hmm. Yeah, I was saying in obscurity when nobody knows. Exactly. So. But God knows. Just like exactly. with the John the Baptist, where the yeah. Holy Spirit anointed him, even from his mother's womb. You know, he had that call and that mission. That's right. That's right. It, it, even when, when when the prophet went to to to, to bless the the, the son's to know who's going to be king, David was yeah. left out. 
Yep. David wasn't even second Present. thought, but yep. God knew that this is the man who's going to be king. I've chosen him to be king. So, you know, we're youth, you know, young days, man, God has chosen us for a particular reason. And yeah. we have to come up and show up for his name's sake. And, and yeah. as we're talking, as we're talking, you know, I just got this little ghost bounce and I was like thinking, wow, like God is so particular and he does things for a reason, right? We don't understand it. He chose David for a reason because he could see what, yeah. he, what was in David's heart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And God is a God of order. And even as we're reading Chronicles, we see in terms of the dedication of the temple, they were very systematic and orderly. It wasn't yeah. just haphazard or just, you know, things all over the place. And that showed like in that devotion to God, what we're giving God as well, God's service is very orderly as well, very structured. And yeah. I was like, because sometimes you read the Chronicles and be like, wait, what's the point of reading these come things? Yeah, come on. But yeah. even in the way it's written, it shows you there's an order, there's a structure and a very clear organization. And that's how God is as well, right? Yeah, it's true. It's true. I, I like that though. David, um, Solomon was very particular about how he built the temple. Very. Yeah. And, and when we're doing stuff for God, we want to be haphazard. We want to give God the very least or, or the, 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 just just the mere thing. But Solomon went all the way, all the way. to build yeah. a temple. And it yeah. was a very expensive and most beautiful temple of building at that yeah. era. Yeah. They've got the best. And we have to do the same thing too. We have to give God the best. Exactly. We, have to. we can't yeah. be half-hearted in serving God and, and, and just 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 be there. We have to give him our all as yeah. we serve him. And yeah, and Jesus said it as well. He says, if you're faithful in the little things, he's gonna make yeah. us rule over much. It's like the true test is not when all eyes upon you, it's in the small things. How do you do the small things? You know? Yeah. And then God is gonna be able to trust you to do the larger things. But um but overall, Pastor, like the my takeaway from today is really kind of what you said in terms of, like you said the tone really, in terms of how we know that God is with us in spite of what's going on and our ability to trust him um, throughout the process. And uh, we saw that in the Psalms and we saw with Solomon, he kept faithful to his calling. And um, yeah, and it's really about, you know, fulfilling that mission, that calling, that duty that God has placed on each and every one of our lives, right? Yeah. Awesome. That is that is amazing, man, because we are called by God, you know. Amen. We are called by God and we know that <clears throat> He will bless us. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and Pastor, even even the Proverbs, it's it I just brought it up again. It says it's it's so funny how it comes back to that same theme. It says loyalty makes a person attractive. It's better to be poor than dishonest. So again, first line, loyalty. Then yeah. the fear of the Lord leads to life bringing security and protection from harm. So again, trusting Beautiful. God, having that relationship with Beautiful. him, yeah. they they make that the all-important thing in the scriptures. Yeah. Um, in, but, in, in, in Psalms, in David, one of the, one of the verses, David was, de David dedicate himself not to sin. Hmm. Even though he made some terrible mistakes, yeah. even though he sinned, in, in the worst way possible, but his life was dedicated. He dedicated himself. Yeah. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to live for God. Um, but he made mistakes anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great point you bring up too, because I think it's important people understand, because that's even what the, the Romans, the book of Romans, Paul was talking about in our reading today. is like David made the occasional sin. He fell occasionally, but his life was not a life of sin. Yeah, exactly. So wonderful. You wonderful. Know, it, it wasn't like a continuous thing that he's living in saying he, he fell and he made big mistakes because this mistake will um magnify because of his position yes. as king. You know, if you and I made those same mistakes today, maybe nobody knows. Right. But David being in the position that he was in, yeah. everybody knew about it. That's right. That's right. He he was determined though. He his yeah. his thing was he knew the the, the danger of sinning. Yeah. And as Paul Paul said, the wages of sin, what it yeah. is. Yeah. And so he was strong will by yeah. God's grace. I don't want to live a life of sin. Yeah. And Paul is saying in Romans that we're not slaves to sins. We're not 
we yeah. we can choose and I think yesterday we covered it in our in our discussion that you know we're, we're not slave in the sense that we have no choice you know sometimes we choose to sin but we're not bound by it in that we do it by default right yeah. because when you're born again you have a new yeah. nature you're a new yeah. man so um and I think that's interesting too in terms of the relationship with the law that's probably in the whole of the long discussion where Paul is talking about is the law null and void no we know that the law still exists it's still valid because we know sin because the law exists right um <clears throat> we probably don't have time to go into that one that's a <laughs> long long discussion yeah 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 um, Paul says the law the law is holy man just and yeah. good Christ yeah. is also holy just and good and we can't separate the law throw the law away and put grace there we can't throw grace away and put the law there, there. Yep. it's a connection and we have to it's put connection. that connection together some people want to live in the law others want to live in god's grace yeah you can't separate them amen amen all right pastor please close it down for us today um give us some of the final thoughts final words for the day and also if you don't mind just a closing prayer and remembering those who are you know just happen to come across this video that god will bring the right people to this video and uh, accomplish his, his purpose for these videos as well yeah in, in our study this morning we saw that god was in the temple we saw that the Bible make it clear that the clothes was there and they knew that that was God. Mm. Our hearts are God temple right now. Mm. And we have to know that God is in the temple. Man. God yeah. is there worshiping wow. with us. And God is there to protect us. In spite of what we're going through, we can depend on God because he is in his temple. Pastor, you, you said something there and I was like, man, you, you dropped the sauce. You left the sauce for the end. <laughs> that's some that's some powerful stuff right there. That's that just brought me some goosebumps. Like that connection with God was in the temple and God is in the temple of our hearts. So God dwells within us today. That's some deep stuff, man. And even that connects with the what we read in the New Testament in Romans in terms of living a life with of not sinning, living a holy life, because God dwells within us and He yeah. wants beautiful our temple. Wow, beautiful. Man. Yeah, man, man, man. That's some great stuff there. Wow. Wow, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That, that definitely ministered to me. And um, that's a powerful thought. If you just meditate on that, friends, and we want to encourage you, meditate on God's word. You know, chew on it. Don't just like, it's not fast food, right? The Bible is not fast food. The Bible is nourishment, spiritual food. And we need to spend time digging and eating. And throughout the day, you know, pray about the scriptures that you read. Ask the Holy Spirit to continually, continuously speak to you. What does this mean? How does it apply to me? And that's why we think we get the most benefit from scriptures by wrestling with them, comparing scripture to scripture, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. So, Pastor, sorry for jumping in, but I just like, I felt okay. like that was a. That was good. Yeah. yeah. That was good. Thank you for reading me. Thank you for it. It yeah. showed, it, it spread more light on, on what was said. Thank you. I mean, yeah, listening no to you, talking about it, we could feel the spirit of God coming in there. Amen. It was good. Thank no, you. That's awesome stuff, man. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that stuff. And uh, yeah, no, feel free to close it down and then I'll offer the prayer as well. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the reading of today. We thank you for your spirit that was with us today and we recognize your presence right this morning. Continue to be with us, Lord. Continue to show yourself in our lives. Dear Lord, somebody just happen to see this program bless them lord yes. give them an understanding that you are with them and you will protect and guide them and lead them through eternity we're asking for your continued blessing upon someone who has in some kind of financial problem lord. there are others who are sick please open a, please open doors for them that they can see your glory and give you all the thanks and all the praise bless us through the day i pray in jesus name Amen. Amen. Father. Amen. So, Pastor, thank you so much for that prayer. And um, friends, we just want to thank you for being here. We hope that you were blessed and ministered to. Like we said every day, we say every day, not by what we've said or what we discussed, but by what God, God's word said, what God through his word, for the prophets, for the ministry of the Holy Spirit has communicated to your heart and mind. And we pray that you receive the blessing. And we want to thank Pastor Nicholas. We're privileged to have him and very dedicated soldier for Christ. And um, we want to thank him for being here and leading these calls. 
And uh, friends, we just want to remind you of Act of Kindness Ministries, which Pastor Nicholas is the president and founder of this ministry. And God has led him to start a ministry based on doing Act of Kindness, where this ministry helps to provide for the physical needs of people, right? Food, clothing, and shelter, and also disaster relief. Uh, this ministry helps provide when people are in the greatest time of need in their life, and this ministry provides the physical help that they need in that point in time. And we believe that as we do so, God opens a way for people to receive the gospel where men and women can be saved. For example, right now, this ministry is helping to build two churches in Ghana, and this project is ongoing. So we we thought it fitting to provide you with an update rep report, a progress report to let you know how the work is going, and also importantly, how you can help support this work. So what we've done is to place Pastor Nicholas's email address right below this video, right in the description box, and also the ministry website where you can learn more about the ministry and also, we placed a short video clip right after the video that you're watching right now. You'll see a short clip explaining this church building project in Ghana and how you can support this work as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Pastor Nicholas. Uh, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And we look forward to your support. And thank you in advance for your support. Lastly, friends, if you haven't yet, please support this work, support this channel by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and leaving us your comments below. It helps us to get the video out there on social media where more people can learn about this work that we're doing. So we thank you in advance for your support and we look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's episode of My Daily Manor. Take care, God bless you, and bye for now. Amen. Beautiful.